Hey heroes, welcome to our extended edition uh, here on Patreon. Um, last week, I think the the chapter we said we were going to hit and extended was chapter forty nine, um, which was the Rand uh, big sort of bigger Rand chapter in that big block. I mean, last time we had a lot of crazy things going on, right? Parents, everything that's going on in the two rivers. Um, and then, of course, the stuff going on at the White Tower. So uh, the Rand chapter was kind of like the one in that we kind of decided to to, to save for extended. So um, chapter 49, Cold Rock's Hold. After Ruark announces they have arrived at Cold Rock's Hold, Rand looks around puzzled because he cannot see it. It could have been any piece of the waste. Ruark begins to run towards what Rand thinks is a wall, and the other Jindo follow him, while the Shido set up camp. Rand asks Avienda to ride behind him so that he can, um, so that she can give advice about Aiel customs. She agrees, but warns him not to make me look a fool before my sisters. <laughs> Rand heals uh, uh, Jaidine into a, a, um, a canter. So that he can catch up with Rourke while Avienda tells him that he must remove his shufa. You must enter a hold with your face clear to be seen. It is customary to make noise when approaching uh, a, a hold to show that you do not mean to take it by surprise. When Rand draws level with Rourke, he notices that Amis and Kuladin have joined him. He is puzzled when he notices that Kuladin is looking at him with amusement. Uh, hate and disdain Rand had come to expect, but amusement... Matt rides up to them and wants to know what is happening, and Rand explains where they are. Matt sa uh, says, comments that the hold isn't a patch on the stone or the Torah Harad. The Torah Harad is something from his memories. He goes on to wonder whether um, Kail and Kadra will leave soon, and Rand replies that they're sort of uh, fair whenever clan chiefs meet, and that merchants will not want to miss it. Ren gets his first glimpse of the hold and is very surprised by what he sees. The canyon walls are covered with greenery, unlike the rest of the waste, and the canyon is filled with small, flat-roofed houses of gray stone or yellow clay. The roofs of the house have been converted into gardens growing fruits and vegetables, and there are paths winding between the houses. The paths are now lined with women, men, and children who are beating pots to welcome the Jindo back. Amis runs into the hold ahead of Rourke and the others who have slowed to a fast walk. Rand notices that Amis has climbed onto a platform at the far end of the hold and is standing with another Aiel woman and realizes that she is Ly Lane? Lion? Yeah. I forget what it is. Lian? Lian. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, she's the roof mistress of Cold Rock's hold. Uh, Ruark steps forward and asks, as a clan chief to enter uh, the hold, I ask leave to enter your hold, and Lain um, welcomes him warmly. Uh, Heron uh, then asks uh, the Sep chief, I ask to come beneath your roof, and is also welcomed. Kuladin then steps forward and asks as a clan chief to enter the hold. Avienda cannot believe that he has asked as a clan chief when he is not one and tells Rand that with uh, within Lain's power to refuse him, and she may for such an insult. Finally, Leanne uh, gives her answer and says, you have my leave to step beneath my roof. Water and shade will be found for you. Avienda tells Rand that she is welcomed uh, him as a beggar and then pushes Rand forward. As uh, Karkarn, Rand should ask to enter um, as would a clan chief, but instead he asks as a sept chief. Amis has told Land that Rand is who... Uh, he who comes with the dawn, and she welcomes him into the hold. For the chief of chiefs, there is ever water and shade at Cold Rock's hold. Kuladin glares at Rand before stalking back to the Shido camp, and Matt warns Rand to watch your back with that one. Rand thinks that Kuladin is not his real threat, and that Lanfear and Moraine are. Uh, Amis and uh, Lane, or whatever it is, I'm going to say it different every time, uh, Lan uh, climbs down from the platform and Ruark introduces them both as his wives. Both Rand and Matt are shocked at this. Ruark is surprised that Rand did not know the Aiel custom because he thought that Avienda as his teacher should have told him. Avienda insists there were more important matters and Rand quickly adds that she has never been a very good teacher and that he wants her to continue teaching him. Amis considers this and agrees that Avienda should continue to teach him about Aiel customs, though Avienda seems less happy about the arrangement. 
Leanne invites Rand and Matt to come beneath my roof for the evening, and they walk to her house. Rand notices that it, uh, that it only looks large enough for two rooms, but when he steps inside, he realizes that other rooms could have been created by cutting into the canyon walls. The floors are covered by rugs and carpets. Um, from places such as Tyr and Ilion. He notices that many of the objects come from outside of the Aeol waste, though it could have had the garnishes, uh, garnishness of Tyr, and instead looks, it looks very grand. Rand gives uh, Leanne a gold lion, and Matt gives her a uh, Tyrian necklace as gifts. By this time, the wise ones, Moraine, Egwene, and Lan have also arrived, but Leanne refuses a guest gift from Moraine. Your very presence is a gift beyond value. Value. Moraine comments that Aes Sedai will visit the way soon, but the wise ones do not look happy about that. Gaishan, um, or Gaishan uh, brings in drinks and food for the evening, um, and the group begins to eat. Ayo do not sit at the table. They lie on the floor with their heads together, cushions on the, under their chests, radiating out like spokes on a wheel, and this is so. Uh, this is what the group does. Avienda spends the meal lecturing Rand in tooth-grinding detail about more Ayo customs, though it is Amis and Leanne who tell him about the sister wives. Avienda seems angry, and Rand tells her that she can refuse to be his teacher. I'm I'm sure Ruark or the wise ones will find someone else. She refuses and carries on about lecturing him about Aiel customs. After the meal is finished, Ruark gives Rand some news about the other clans, the Goshen and Shard. Clans are already at uh, Al-Kardal, and the uh, Charin are on their way. Rand knows that something like the Peace of Rudion holds at Al-Kardal. Uh, but is worried about the Goshen and Sharad clans that might start fighting because they have a feud. Um, Melaine and uh, Bane are empathetic uh, that the claims will that they will not fight, and Ruark explains that he cannot travel to Arakaldal to make sure that the peace holds. Um, any clan who arrives after Rand will have lost, and Rand cannot afford to do that. To be safe, Rand must wait a month before going, and although Rand is concerned that he cannot wait a month, he knows he has no choice. Ruark goes on to explain who will probably side with Rand. He believes the uh, Tarad, uh, Rain, and uh, Naki clans will almost certainly join him, while the uh, Tamanel Tommen uh, clan may move in any direction, and the Shido may not support him. However, he believes most of the clans will, if not all, because the two dragons prove he is the Karakarn. He thinks Rand should wear the uh, Caden Soar to show that he has Aiel parentage, but Rand refuses. I will not pretend I am what I am. Moraine asks where he means to lead the Spears uh, once more, but Rand doesn't answer. Instead, he announces that he is going to walk outside and leave the house. So, yeah. this chapter is, and I guess I can go ahead and say this um, because this is extended edition, and most of the people here on Patreon are. Spoilers uh, ahead, and this isn't spoilers for the whole series because I'm not there yet, but I am one chapter away from finishing um, the this book, The Shadow mm -hmm. Rising, and we'll probably be recording here because the first is coming up. Yep. So um, I think we could probably talk maybe a little about this chapter as well as I haven't read the final chapter, but I have read the second to final chapter. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Is that okay to talk mm -hmm. about this? Uh, so yeah, just, for, just if anyone's just so for clarity, mm -hmm. so we're jumping ahead a part. So this will be part eight a little bit. Matt's going to weave in the last little bit, probably about Cold Rock's hold and right even and, and all and, all, all character. Right. And maybe yeah. what kind of maybe what kind of happens there. So because we're probably going to be recording it pretty soon. So yeah. you're going to get both parts, but just spoiler ish for people. Yeah. Um, and again, we'll we'll cover this on the main as well because it's it's going to be the big thing. So next week's un uh, un extended edition will be probably about something else. Um, so as uh, some takeaways from this particular chapter, man, the dynamic of Avi and Durant mm -hmm. mm -hmm. heating up. Yes, yeah, it does. I I mean, they are well. Here's a couple things. So um, they. In the culture, in their culture, it's like the like honor, uh, Gia to, um, whether or not you've shamed someone or you've been respectful is like really important. So like Avian is teaching him the customs. It's a pretty big deal that she's teaching uh, the chief of chiefs, the Karakarn, right? 
And so she doesn't want to look bad. This is a big task. We might not think that it's much, like, because we see things through, like, the lens of Rand. But, like, Avienda, she gets frustrated with him for a lot of reasons. A lot of reasons mm -hmm. that we don't know about yet. But we do know one of them is that, like, there's pressure here. She wants him to be a good, re like, um, reflect that her teachings were good and that he understands things. So, like, the kind of the shock, one of the quotes from this chapter um, is, uh, once, it's, once it's revealed that Ruark is married to Amis and Leanne, um, Matt says, both of them? Light, too? Burn me. He's either the luckiest man in the world or he's the biggest fool since the creation. Like, he's just kind of shocked, right? So, and then, I mean, Avienda's like offended because she's like, wait, I, and because also Rand is also shocked. And she's like, I told, you know, like, we're getting to this. You're not listening to what I'm telling you. So things are kind of uh, firing up a little bit between them. And there's a interesting dynamic. She's sitting right on the back of his horse riding in with him, which is not their custom, but he's different. He brings change, right? The Karakarn brings change. And he goes in here much more humbly, Kooladin, freaking jerk. He's not a clan chief, not been mm -hmm. confirmed. And he asked for water and shade as a clan chief, and that's insulting. And so, therefore, he's greeted with insult, you know? Yeah. Well... All I'll say is uh, maybe, maybe we. I guess we already told people there might be spoilers, so people, some people may have clicked off. I don't know if we have to get super into it, but let's just say uh, he gets some real insults in, in in next week. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, like like the Shido are messing up big time here. I mean they they're they're really just not they're being misled, misguided. Things didn't go well. They're not given permission. Um, I mean, Kulin is not given permission to go to Rudion, so therefore he's not a clan. So they don't have a clan chief. They're following Kuladin. And Kuladin is acting like he's more than he is. And it's not it's it's not a good thing. Uh it's gonna it's it's you can tell this is gonna be confrontational, you know? Right. So I I mean they're th yeah, they're they don't like Rand. They're upset because they feel like Rand is an outsider, even though technically yeah. he's not. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, he, he grew up there, and and that's interesting, right? Because they did take in Rand's mother, who was a wetlander, and then she became one of their own. So since he's so fresh and new, it's like the more he time he spends with them, I think they could start to embrace him. But this is abrupt, you know? He uses portal stones and travels to the, to the waste, and then he goes to their sacred city, and right. he's just, you know... It's 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 wild. He's fitting all of their prophecies. He's fulfilling right. all of their prophecies, but it's just hard. It's breaking them. You know. Isn't it, do you do you think it? Do you find it interesting? I mean, I'm sure you probably you probably do. So this is a, I mean, that at the same time that this stuff's happening with Rand, where Rand is becoming like the Car Karn and uniting these the the people of um, Rand is uniting the Aiel, who is his blood right, but not necessarily who he grew up with. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you have Perrin going on, undergoing like a very similar situation in which Perrin's like, why am I, why are people following me here in the right. two rivers? And right. they're almost ready to name Perrin king of the two rivers. Yes, yeah, so they are. Yes, they are. I know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, yeah. Uh, Cause the light needs to be united. You've got to answer the call. Like there is a battle coming. That's the whole point. Tarman Gaiden, the last mm -hmm. battle, you got to get ready for it. And the dragon is supposed to be there to lead us in battle. Um, so he wants these clans united, and that's what he's talking with Ruark quite a bit. It's awesome. Like, Ruark is his guy. I mean, Ruark is is his clan chief who will stick close to him. I think he trusts him quite a bit. And um, it's interesting. You have a... You remember how we had the village council and the women's circle back in Emmons Field? You kind of have the wise ones and the clan chiefs here. And you've got the mm -hmm. roof mistresses, like the the roof mistress. She's, you know, I mean, she's very important, very important. I mean, permission has to be granted before even the clan chief can bring his people in. So it's just it's 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 really cool. And there's there's these different um, circles that they work in that I think are interesting. The wise ones still respect the clan chiefs, and they have to guide them sometimes, and they can help them but sometimes they're stubborn and they're hard to be kind of pulled along or whatever you get back into that kind of you know women's circle versus village council thing you can kind of feel that with the IEL a little bit 
Uh, and you feel it actually all throughout Robert Jordan's uh, world here with Saidine and Saidar and, and, and the uh, rocking that back and forth and, and, and turning the wheel. But um, yeah, I just think, I think as, as Matt says with Kooladin, watch your back with that one, right? Watch your yeah. back with that one. There's something, there's something up here. And, and, uh, and again, Rand is not worried about Kooladin. He's this whole time. He's, he's watching people's eyes He's wondering what more rain and the wise ones are going to do, how they're going to pull them one way or the other. What's Lanfear going to do? Remember Lanfear and him had a conversation back in Tyr? Lanfear was there talking to him. Um, he thinks the real threats are Lanfear and more rain. So, you know, we got a lot, got a lot going on and, and you can right. see the divide between him and more rain becoming greater and greater. And she's trying to figure out how do I bring him back? How do I, how do I help him? This has been her whole life's work, you know. But I mean, I guess you know, there's something that Rand will say in the ne in the next chapter, and I don't, and the and you know, it, still potential spoilers, maybe not. But Rand is saying, and this is something that's come up before, as if is is it whatever I do the right thing if I'm if I am the Dragon Reborn? Yeah, <sighs> what will be will be, right? Uh, right. The wheel will <laughs> weave as it as it will. Um, What's your part to play? I, yeah, it's 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 interesting. I, I do I try I try not to get caught up in those conversations because it just leads to to it's all predestined. Then you know I mean it's right. just, or or is it is it all you know right? I mean if it's all if it's, if it's all that easily predestined, then why do various weavings and why have people re why not have the dragon reborn a thousand years prior? You know. Right. It's just interesting, you know, and it just gets you into those bigger topics where I'm like, wow, this is this series can be a mind uh, melt. Uh, melt. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But yeah. Um, so, no, I'm with I'm with you. And it, it, and I, I totally get why Rand is frustrated. Um, and then I think, man, Rand's getting his people. Perrin's getting his. Is Matt going to get like a group of people to lead? I mean, it's up. Well, I guess technically well, he has the, he's, the, he's probably he's the horn. He's got the horn. Well, and also remember how like the act like power came to the three, right? So like Rand right. kind of gets his first, then Perrin. Then we kept wondering, what's up with Matt? You got the dagger that slowed everything down for him, his progression. So mm -hmm. just hold on, right? I mean, I'm Perrin's sure, yeah. Perrin's rising, Matt's rising. Oh, I'm sorry, Rand is rising, Perrin's rising. Uh, just keep uh, read and find out on on Matt because there's definitely more more to come. Rand needs his Taviran, and what will be interesting is how they can counter the shadow and what they can do for one another right. and help one another. Um, so are the, yeah. are the clan, the clans that will unite under Rand? Mm -hmm. Is it because he's actually the dragon reborn or is it because he's Taviran? Yeah. Or, or um, <laughs> is it just that they believe he's right. the dragon reborn? You know what I mean? Like the, he's the, he's the Karakarn. I mean, he's fulfilling the prophecies and, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, they believe it. They believe right. it's the good, right? Because the next block of chapters, which you said, spoilers potential. Yeah, you know what happens in in that chapter, and we can well, obviously we're going to dive into more into this. Yeah, so Kuladin says, "Well, I'm the I'm the Dragon Reborn. I'm the Karakarn. What? A, first of all, what a joke! Get this guy out! <laughs> Get this guy out of here!" But then, joke. Rand's just like sitting there, and he's basically almost laughing it off, like. It, you yeah. everything you it has nothing to do with the prophecy. Everything you said is this could not be further from the prophecy. He's just mm -hmm. upset that he's an outlay. He's an outlander, right? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. And and so you go back and you look at the prophecies. It's kind of it's it's so crazy when they're brought up and you're like, well, this is just meant to be. But then you also look at like Rand has to. We have to watch him go through it and how he fulfills them is interesting and all that kind of stuff because he will break these people. I mean, that's what the prophecies say. He's going to like one of, I don't know if it's the one with the Aiel or not, but like, um, like to save the world, he's going to break the world essentially. Like he's going to, the way he goes about it is, is just, is what's interesting because you're right. Why doesn't he react more strongly towards Kooladin later on? He's thinking about other things. He's, th he's thinking well beyond. Like right. there are times, there are times, let me just break form here for a second, because there are times where 
I am reading about Randall Thor, and I think to myself, this is a man with so much power that he might be able to fight the last battle by himself. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Watch out. It's just, I, I, I totally am kidding. Obviously, obviously, that is very does counter. He even, to does the he even and, need, right? Yeah. Because that's the the whole point is that they're that they're all in this together and and that we got to unite. I just said it earlier in this episode, which is you got to unite for that last battle. But there's times where I think, watch out, Rand can do a lot more than we than we realize. Like he's got some power. He's got loose there and talking to him. And yeah. So I mean, sometimes he's not worried about certain stuff, and it's like there's there's a reason why, um, or his mind is on something else, and Moraine is trying to get him to focus on the here and the now, or don't. Um, like basically he's looking at bigger chess chess pieces on a chessboard or stones on the on the stone board and Moraine is saying pay attention to the small pieces. You need all of these things. The everything has to be ordered and woven correctly. But that is Moraine's role. That is what her that is her piece and her thread in the pattern. That's what she's meant to do. It's that's her she's that guide. That She's going to have to figure out how to get through to Rand. Rand is not always going to listen to her. And so she's struggling with that majorly in this chapter. You know, the other thing, cultural. Um, we were talking about like the different, um, the IEL customs and things like that. Like, they're raiders, man. They yeah. raid. And they have stuff from Tyr and Ilian and, and Andor. And they've got, like, fine garments. And they take one-fifth. That's what's fair. They don't take everything. She's got some different customs. The uh, guy Shane uh, are running around all dressed in white. And what does Giotto mean? Fascinating things that we'll kind of keep exploring and learning more about because their customs are very interesting. I think Rand knows these are like his people and he's got to take care of them and ease them. Well, I mean, he's ease them into whatever mission right. he has for them. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not going to be easy because they're so different. They're so different from what he's grown up in that he needs a teacher, Avienda, to tell him what all these different things are. Then he goes to, to Rudion to learn about these people. And they're so different um, from what we have in Andor and Kyrian and, and, and other places that you just, how do you work with these people? How do you, they're, they're I don't know, I think Jordan is teaching us something about different cultures working together and learning about things that seem bizarre to right. us. Like Matt's shocked about having two wives, right? The girls often will go to different places where uh, the clothing is very scarce or there is right. no clothing. You're topless on a ship, go, you know, going around and they're shocked by that. So Jordan's always thrusting these characters into new cultures and different places and locations. And, and that's interesting. And that's a theme that's relatable, you know? So yeah, yeah. No, that's great. It's great, and I don't. I don't want to dive su super detailed into into the, the that chapter with with Rand. We, I want to save that for 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 next week. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so just to kind of finish on just to kind of finish on 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 this extended edition. Um, yeah, it is it, it, his dialogue with Avienda. I like where she where she's really diving in the the custom. It's something they've been working on for a while. Where she's she's also learning too because you know it's it's she's been challenged every time. She's like how do you guys just not get this right you know like when she's talking to Egwene and stuff like that it's like yeah everybody knows this is what you do everyone knows this is what you do and then it's like well maybe not i mean i didn't know you guys did this right right um it's kind of like something that's going on with egyanen right now a little bit too where egyanen's mm -hmm. like well this is how we do stuff and that's right uh, and so and it's Sean so, Chen, very different very different so yeah so all right guys well hey this is kind of an extended edition um, as any closing, any closing thoughts you want to get in here in the last second or no, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to get, uh, uh, like tomorrow we're going to record the, the final bit to what I think is one of the longest books in the series. And so we're going to be in part eight of the shadow rising. I cannot wait to talk about the ending of that. I know Matt's going to listen to, uh, just that last chapter and then we're going to be, it's exciting. It's an exciting yeah. last chapter. So yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, thank you for supporting us here on Patreon. As we always say, it is an enormous help to the show. Um, just helps keeps everything going. 
Uh, so we really, really do appreciate that. And uh, guys, leave us comments, shoot us questions. Um, I know I myself probably, unfortunately, don't get to a lot of those just because um, a lot of you guys, especially here on Patreon, want spoilers. We did get that Facebook group going, which I also stay out of. Um, but people have tagged yeah. me in some things, so I've looked at those. And and there have been some people who have even posted things. Now, again, you can post spoilers willy-nilly over there, but some people have been pretty respectful. So so thank oh, you yeah. for those guys who are who yeah. are who are going out going out of your way to do that. We do we you know do appreciate that for those who don't necessarily want to be spoiled. Um, unfortunately, you know, Facebook isn't say as good as Reddit. Uh, Reddit, you can kind of have that that box thing where you can you can hide spoilers from people. Facebook, you kind of got to say spoilers and edit it down. Yeah, go ahead, S. Yeah, I did, I did want to say I know people here on Patreon were also talking about. Um, how how easy a Discord is to run. You know, we've done Discords in the past, and I'm not in them very much. Like, we have one for our BTK group, and people are in there, and they do comment, and they do chat. So it's an option. It's just not something that, like, I'm good at running or right. that I would even check very often. So if you kind of want, like, our involvement in it, it's um, – unless we get – I think we're going to eventually get to a point where when the show comes out, we'll be doing – um, things like that. Like we might add in different perks and discord rewards and stuff. That's something we've done in the past, but, uh, yeah, like Matt said, Reddit's different, discord's different, any ideas, send them our way. We're, we're willing to consider anything, but I like the Facebook group just to be able to go in there. And I saw somebody had put like spoilers and they did all the returns, you know, and you had to click right. read more to see it. And I was like, ah, oh. and they actually brought up a pretty cool one. And I was like, all right, this is cool. That was cool for people who want spoiler discussion among the heroes group. And that was done the right way. And now it's not always going to happen that way. Uh, there will be spoilers over there. So anyone who has asked, like, Hey, is it safe to go over there? No, it's not because, um, it, it has to be spoiler. <laughs> it has to be <laughs> because, because, uh, imagine a year from now when the show hits, people will be finding the podcast and they'll be at eye of the world. And if they go to that group, it's going to be spoiler. You know what I mean? It's just, that's right. hard to do. You know, there's actually a really good, um, I think it's called the blasted land blight the blight the blight i think dot com um and it's uh oh my gosh what is his name it's a good youtube creator we just talked about him the other day uh nablus nablus, nablus yeah. is running something over there. actually the show i would love to as well and i I'd, I'd love to to yeah to work with him they've actually asked um if we'd be interested in in writing up some summaries for things and and hiding it behind spoiler panels so you have to click to see the spoilers you know versus like the wiki is set up as full spoiler you read it you, right. you could be one line just trying to just trying to scroll all the way down yeah yeah so right. anyways that's a i've good, actually that's a good resource. and i've actually accidentally read a few things that have been spoilers through, through the the wiki. summary website we use yeah. no the tarval oh, library yes because i remember there yes. was one time and that wasn't that, that was something that's like sort of alluded to but is it ever, it's never really outside said and even if it is it's nothing like major big that's that's seems oh, like yeah. that's kind of a deep level thing that i read ac you know accidentally or whatever but yeah yeah but yeah but the, you, you do got to be careful as because some people as they're summarizing that when, when a character's name's not mentioned in their summary they know the character because they've read it so they put the, the character's name that in happened and then, that happened once yeah yeah and it's like that's okay yeah. i mean we, we try to avoid those things as best as possible but um, I know in the, our Facebook group, it's just for fun, just casual, and um, yeah. it's 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 a good time. But yeah, the blight, the blight. I'll try to get the link for you guys and put it maybe in the in the comments, and we can pass it around. Good little resource, I think, for folks. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys do want to interact with us, I'd say the best place is Twitter. That's where Ez and I are really, I'd say, pretty pretty active. So um, you can follow me anywhere on the internet at Super Gains Bros. You can follow Ez at Wamprat underscore. 2M guys and we will actually see you very soon because uh, we'll be recording our next episode here pretty shortly and then it'll, it'll have its own extended edition so stay tuned for that and remember that the grave is no bow to our call